Hey, Herd, it's Brad and Steve here. We wanted to do a show that was a little bit more centered around the statistics. That's what we love. We really see our target mar our audience as people that like really love the nitty gritty. They love like fantasy sports. They want to be more involved in a typical bracket. And so this is the stuff that a lot of our users love is being able to dig. And that's why we make it accessible to you where you can see it and play with the numbers. We have several users that give us lots of feedback of how to upgrade things, and we like to listen to that. So if you have any suggestions, feel free to let us know, and we're going to reach back to some people on that. I'm going to give a quick rundown on some of the points that I like from uh, the statistical side and from the actual rate of scoring, and then Steve's going to do some of his. So he's going to pull up um, the charts, and um, the best he's going to try to follow along with me as he can, but I'm all over the place. So... The first thing that is super cool about the tournament so far is that in each of the round, the round winners have been decided by like a point and a half a point. So in the first round, um, we have just a very slight, if you look over there, the difference between um, the winner of round one, which was Syracuse wins it all was the round one winner. And the next team down was just what? What is that? Like a point and a tenth. I mean, you're talking one one decision that was made. If they had picked any one of the um, of the um, the <laughs> the favorite any, teams, any favorite, yeah, yeah, the favorite teams. If they'd have picked any one of those like differently, that would have made one the winner of the round and not that. I mean, to me, that's so crazy. And the same thing with the round of thirty two. So on the round of thirty two. Um, the, the overall winner was the bench warmer or no, no, many will try, but few will succeed. And, um, that's incredible. Like you can see down here, 25.88. And the, the second team was just about a point and a half behind that. So many will try, but few will succeed was the second round winner. But there, once again, it was one decision between those two. And for the overall on the game, we have the bench warmers at 208.91 and Syracuse wins it all. So you're one just slight underdog pick from the difference. And everybody is still in it. Everybody in the top five is still in it. Now, if you, if you're, you know, obviously there's a huge drop off from uh, the brilliant idiot to, is it from Sarah, Sarah to hit or miss. But before that, like, those teams in the top five are certainly still all in it, and you've only got a few rounds left to, to up. And obviously, as the rounds go on, there's less and less scoring. So the picks are going to matter more and more and more. Um, so in, on the team side of the, of the flocks, on the flock side, round one was absolutely dominated by the hoop swoopers with a round average of 179.18. And the difference between them and the Trinity Band of Flockers, which is my flock, of 74.26. So it was a, over a 100-point difference. But I think the difference was fairly Dickinson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the difference was fairly Dickinson, yes. one hundred. Well, that's 144 points. So if you strip – well, some of those fairly Dickinson points were also were gained by the Trinity Band as well. So it's hard to tell what would happen if you strip that one choice out by itself. But obviously, they all picked it, and there was a splitting of hairs on the Trinity Band. So, um, which fun note, a band is also a name for a gathering of sheep. So there's a there's a few things inside of the name, anyways. But round two for the flocks, the difference was about a point point and a half. And once again, Trinity came in second, but in that round. Um, I believe it was, boy, did I write that down? Um, Supreme Flock. It was the Supreme Flock. So it was 17.96 seven, versus 18.67. I mean, that is that is the difference of one uh, favorite per pick per team. You know, like they just picked one better pick. Every person on our team just had an average of one better pick. And that was what separated them. So that's pretty cool on the Flock side. Um, so you can see it's going to get even tighter. Um, the next, what we have going in the sweet 16, the
the absolute most points you can score if you take all the underdogs is 32.49. But the least, if you take all the favorites, it's 13.15. So there is still an insane amount of differentiating behind how you want to do your strategy, especially if you're in one of those top spots. Because if someone takes all of the underdogs and they all go down, then they're going to make up 13 points and vice versa. There is a lot of teams out there that are going to provide a decent spread. Um, you know, but the spreads get smaller and smaller because we learn more and more about these teams. So there's the, it's harder and harder to take the underdogs and get the points that to make up the gaps from the last round. Uh, some of the points that made a huge difference. I think you kind of had to pick Princeton to win because you got the most points by picking Princeton by far. Um, the other one, like um, Miami was an important pick to take. Um, you know, the, that was one of the, the big differentiators. And then obviously um, with Kansas getting eliminated by Arkansas, those were the, the ones that seemed to really put the teams into the higher edge. Like I got edged out. I ended up fifth because I didn't take Arkansas. If I had taken Arkansas, I would have won the round. So that one choice put me out because of the spread on the points. Um, but it was a very, very tight margin. Um, so going forward, people are going to really have to decide strategically. You know, the, the interesting thing becomes is if you're in the lead right now overall, do you pick more favorites? And try to just gain on your on your opponents who have to pick the underdogs to gain up, or do you try to maintain your lead because it's a one point difference or a one pick difference in some of these cases? So I'm just really interesting or interested to see how people navigate those choice fields if they become more conservative or more aggressive as the tournament moves on. Um, so Steve, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm sure you have your own sub points within this, but I can't wait to see how we progress from here. Yeah. So, you know, one thing, a big difference from a bracket is, you know, this contest, it has the three phases and I'm excited that many will try a few, a few will succeed, even though they were clearly, you know, they weren't in that group that got, uh, fairly Dickinson in the first round. So their score, their overall score coming out of the first round was 37.9. You know, so kind of out, out of the running for the Rammy, the overall championship. But to see um, them come in and take the second round um, with really only, I think they missed maybe four picks out of out of the 16 picks that you had to make. So pretty dead on. And that's what we've seen like it takes. You have to have that mix of the right underdogs and the favorites as well. Um, and they proved that out. Um, definitely feel for bench warmers for being the runner up in the round of 64 by like 1.05 <laughs> and the runner up in, <laughs> in the round of 32 by like 1.5 points. Um, so, but you know, neat to see them right at the top, you know, very indicative of their strong performance in both rounds. And something that Brad and I were talking about, we've we've never had a win, an overall winner of a Ram contest that did not win a round or have a performance that would have run around, won a round. The first time we ran March Madness, we didn't have the rounds. But um, the person who did win Gelpus Gangsters last year uh, would have run the round of 64 had we made that like its own round thing. So, um, so bench warmers, you have that potential to be stout throughout the contest, uh, but you know, maybe you'll win the final round as well, but, um, but it, it's exciting to see that. And, you know, if, if you had a typical bracket, um, I'm sure you've seen on ESPN and Brad mentioned it on a prior uh, video, you know, Duke, UNC, Kansas, and who was the other one? Duke, UNC, Kansas, and UNC. Who's the other? Uh, uh, Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah, are all out. And so I would wager most brackets <laughs> had those teams going fairly deep in. So a lot of brackets are busted. A lot of people are kind of tuning out. But um, one neat thing with Ram is you've got another round to fight for. People can join right now. So if you have friends and family, 
that want to jump into the final round, they are totally welcome to. Um, it's a great opportunity to introduce them and um, you can add to your flock or if you didn't have enough um, players for like a four person flock, you could get that in the final round um, and try to get be a fi final round flock winner. So it's exciting to see what's happening with the, you know, the flock competitions. Uh, we've got that heating up. We've got uh, uh, Hoop Swoopers took round one. Then we had Supreme Flock for round two. So will one of them take the final, uh, the final round, or will there be three flock, you know, round champions kind of? And uh, we'll recognize whoever, if there's an overall winner or round winners, we'll recognize them in the Hall of Fame because. We, under, we understand this is kind of like our experimental year with it. We're <laughs> excited everybody's jumping into it and forming these these subgroups. So, One um, of the things I say that'll be fun is after is if w when the contest is over, if you strip out that Farley Dickinson choice, who would have won from that one, you know, if you split out that one choice, it, that'll be an interesting thing to see, you know, like, because there's some people that have been very strong in both rounds other than the Farley Dickinson thing. But we've talked about, like, that is such a rare thing that, like, we wanted to reward, like, the excitement of, like, if you if you want to blow a once-in-a-lifetime pick, you know, like, but but as we've demonstrated in other rounds, that pick can be the difference between winning the round and losing the round. And also, last year, even in the championship game, the difference was literally the last pick. It came down to the last pick. So in that tournament, if you had picked a 16 seed instead of the favorite, you might have lost the overall tournament because you didn't get that extra, you know, 1.3 points from the favorite team or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, so it is interesting. Like, if you want to take it, it can't keep you. It can put you at the top as it has done this tournament. But it could be the difference between you winning the tournament and losing the tournament. Like, if somebody opts to take all four of the favorites – Next year, and none of the 16 teams win. Well, you're giving up four and a half, five points to your opponent in the overall game. And like last year, it came down to that for in the championship game, which is kind of wild. And yeah, we'll reflect, you know, we'll reflect the fact that now there's been two, it's, it's happened twice out of 152 instances, I suppose, versus one out of 148. <laughs> <laughs> we'll reflect that in our scoring for next year. So I would expect that 16 seeds will receive less points than they did this year, but it's still a highly improbable thing to see, to see happen. So um, congrats, and especially to the teams that didn't pick all four, but nailed that FDU pick. Like that's kind of the spirit behind Ram is to look, yes. to look at those 16 seeds, to look at those 15 seeds and say, that's where I'm placing you know, that's where I'm placing my RAM points. That's where I think I'm going to be able to cash in. Um, so props to you. All right. Well, um, we're excited to be headed towards the final round here. Entries aren't due until 6.30 p.m. on Thursday. That's Eastern Standard Time. So plenty of time to invite more people out to RAM. We'd love to have them, and uh, you can get them hooked uh, and have a bigger flock for the next RAM contest. So yeah. get your horns just up. Oh. Horns up, but well, one thing I'll add is remember the last round is not the Sweet 16. It's Sweet 16, Elite Eight, the Final Four, and the Championship game all together. So if someone hasn't come into play, as long as they get on board, they still have the opportunity to win the pint glass. But it's those three rounds, or those it's rounds three, four, five, and six all together because obviously we need more choices to make a round. So that ends up being about the same amount of choices you make for the round of 32. It's 15 versus 16 choices overall. So just remember that it's not just the Sweet 16 as it's a round in the, in the actual tournament, but for the Ram tournament, it's just one piece of the round. So anyways, horns up and we'll horns see up. you guys next video.